while I don't always want to admit it, money is an important aspect of life. With money, we can buy basic necessities like food and shelter, and it can give us access to higher quality of living. Without money, we wouldn't be able to ask ourselves higher level questions like, who am I? Who do I want to be? Am I fulfilled? And that's why it's better to develop good financial habits earlier on, like in our 20s, so we can set ourselves up for success for decades ahead. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over five financial habits that I'm developing in my 20s so I could be in a good financial position and you know, hopefully achieve financial freedom. So the first habit that I'm developing is to create an emergency fund. Having an emergency fund can come in really clutch when something bad happens to you, like if you were to have a medical incident or a car accident, God forbid. If there's anything that we learned from last year, is that job security isn't really a thing anymore. So if you have a job and you're not saving a small amount of that income to go into an emergency fund, you might be putting yourself in hot water. Now I know that there are a lot of external factors at play and it's not always an individual's bad spending habits that prevent them from covering a $1,000 emergency expense but you have to do whatever it takes to be able to just give yourself a small cushion, if any cushion at all. It doesn't have to be a thousand dollars, but any cushion to help you from getting yourself into debt, by all means, just try to save up as much as you can. And maybe you're already saving as much money as you already can. What do you do? Well, there are two ways to make money. One is to reduce your expenses, and the second one is to raise your income. So the second, financial habit that I'm developing in my 20s is to actually increase my income by diversifying my income streams. You can always save as much as you want, but there is theoretically no ceiling on how much you can earn. There are so many ways to make money online nowadays, even if you don't have a corporate 9 to 5. That being said, when I'm increasing my income, there are a few things that I do look for. One is finding a job that, you know, obviously would pay well. And second is finding a job that will compensate you based on the output that you've created and not the amount of hours that you've worked. There are only 24 hours a day and you can only work so much, but if there is value that you can create for an organization that they'd be willing to pay big money for, then that's your goal. Once I've saved enough money from my nine to five income, I like to use some of those savings that aren't my emergency fund to invest in other channels, things like stocks, bonds, ETFs, other investments. This could also mean using that money as capital to start your own YouTube channel, your own e-commerce business, your own freelancing business, like whatever it is. In our 20s, we should have more appetite for risk than ever, obviously in a calculated sense, but if you want to increase your income as much as possible, I'd say owning a business is the best way to do it, as opposed to salaries and wages. Third financial habit that I'm developing in my 20s might be a little controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway, and it is actually paying stuff with credit card and not with debit or cash. But, and there's a huge but over here, only if you're disciplined enough to actually buy what you can afford. Now there are a couple of reasons why I say this. First one is security, where it's much more difficult to have your identity stolen if you were to use a credit card rather than a debit card. And number two is being able to save up points from using your credit cards. Every time you use your credit card, you get an X percent back on the purchases that you make, and those can come back as cash or points that can be used for travel. But sometimes they can net you much better deals if you were to book through your bank rather than booking regularly at a hotel. Now there are credit cards for beginners and experts, and if you are a beginner, I would suggest getting one with no annual fee, like the Chase Freedom Unlimited or the Chase Freedom Flex. And if you wanted to get any of those cards, I'll have a referral link in my description box below. And if you were to use my referral link as opposed to a regular link, I would just be gaining some free credit card points for referring you. But if you were to get a credit card, I'd urge you to be very, very responsible. In fact, I would go as far as to say to make a monthly budget on how much you can spend on your credit card first, just to make sure that you can actually afford the things that you're buying. I think having a credit card can be a great way to start building your credit score which will be important if you wanted to invest in a property, for example. 
and properties are one of the most tried and true investments that a large majority of millionaires have today. The fourth financial habit that I'm developing is value-based spending. So I mentioned this in my Being Cheap video, and it's all about being able to discern whether or not the purchases you make are intentional. You wanna make sure that every dollar that you put or every dollar that you use to buy something has value and has meaning to it. Should I use this thousand dollars to buy a luxury designer bag? Or maybe should I use it on an experience like going to Hawaii? Or in my case, am I going to buy an expensive camera for YouTube and then just forget about it after a couple months? Or am I going to stick with it and actually use it as an investment to grow an online business? A lot of people like to keep up with the Joneses, which means trying to match their lifestyle to their neighbors and everyone around them. But sometimes it's not in their best interest to buy an expensive house or buy that expensive item. When it comes to value-based spending, you just wanna make sure that you're spending money on something because you actually want to and not because you feel pressured to. Another aspect of value-based spending can also be avoiding retail therapy as much as possible. So walking into a brick and mortar store like Target, especially where they just have anything and everything can be particularly dangerous if you like to spend money to feel better about yourself. Retail therapy could be a symptom of something greater that I'm not really down to get into at the moment. But if you can try to avoid as much spending while you know you're in that zone, your wallet might thank you. That's all I'm saying. The fifth financial habit that I thought would be important to share is to actually just continue learning more about money and personal finance. It's been at least a year since I started my personal finance journey and it's definitely been really educational in how I want to spend my money, save my money, and invest my money. I've watched my fair share of Graham Stephan videos, as well as listened to audiobooks and podcasts related to money and personal finance. And doing that consistently for over a year has given me a lot of knowledge that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't done so. I feel like I have a much better mindset when it comes to money than I did two years ago as a college student who would try to go out almost every single time because I was too lazy to cook. And now moving forward, I know that that money that I use for takeout can have a greater purpose than just food. Now this isn't to say that wealth building is everything, like you obviously want to be able to enjoy life in the present. You just have to walk a very fine line between enjoying the present moment and saving for the future. But learning more about how money works and leveraging it to work for you is possibly one of the best investments you can make for your financial future. And unfortunately, having knowledge on money and personal finance is not stressed enough nowadays. But there are a lot of social media creators, whether it is on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, where people are trying to fill that gap. Personally, money or finance wasn't something that was taught to me in high school or college. So I really relied on the internet to fuel my learning and my education. There are countless resources on the internet that you can basically learn anything that you wanted if you were to find the right person or the right content. So do yourself a favor and get on that finance algorithm and just start learning and taking in all the free information that is provided to you. Now don't feel obligated to take a course on how to make money those are probably scams and I would run away from those if you can. A great podcast that I love is The Money Guy Show and there are two dads in Nashville who actually are financial advisors so you know that they're credible and they talk about how to make money, how to save money, how to invest and they, they break it down in very digestible concepts that even I can understand. I also have a few personal finance videos of my own, and if you wanna watch those, please feel free to check out my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and if you liked this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna see more content related to this. Take it easy.